A way you can remember the treatment for diabetic ketoacidosis is KING-FM. So the K stands for potassium, and what we need to do is monitor their potassium levels. In diabetic ketoacidosis, they can have very low potassium levels, which can be very dangerous. This is another reason why when we do our diagnoses, we're going to do an ECG. Okay, so that's going to affect our heart rhythm, right? Having low potassium will affect our heart rhythm, so that's something they're going to want to monitor for. So monitoring potassium levels. Of course, insulin, right? That's the problem. The lack of insulin or you know, not enough insulin. So we're going to be giving insulin. And instruction, instruction about the insulin. One of the reasons somebody can get into DKA is non-compliance with their medication regimen. So instruction about how to use insulin appropriately, taking it as prescribed, don't use expired insulin, things like that is gonna be really important to teach your patient. If they are in a coma, which can happen sometimes, an NG tube might need to be placed. Of course, glucose monitoring. We wanna know what's their glucose when they came in and what is their glucose now that they're receiving treatment. Hopefully it's going down, right? Hopefully we're getting it into a normal healthy range and the patient is doing better. But we're not gonna know that unless we keep an eye on it. So glucose monitoring is very important. Fluids, IV, so giving IV fluids because metabolic acidosis causes fluid and electrolyte imbalances in the body and we need to fix those. So giving IV fluids. And then M is for monitoring INO, so their input, their output. Typically these patients will get an indwelling Foley catheter placed by the nurse so that we can get strict INO on them. And then also monitoring their creatinine levels. So we want to make sure that this is not starting to affect the other organs in the body. When you have metabolic acidosis, right, you have issues with your kidneys. Your kidneys are not functioning well. So this is going to kind of be an indicator on how well are the kidneys functioning. Are they improving with the treatment that the patient is receiving? And hopefully they are, right? That's the goal. That's what we want. So that was my video on diabetic ketoacidosis. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know. And if not, I'll see you on the next one.